One of the most interesting news stories of 2023 was the release of Meta's new social media, Threads. Threads, which looks suspiciously like Twitter, was released with minimal fanfare just nine months after Elon Musk bought Twitter for $44 billion. Before we go any further, we know that Twitter's called X now, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But for this video, we're gonna refer to it by the name it's historically been called, which is Twitter. Anyway, Threads isn't the first time a social media has looked like another social media. And we would be lying if we said the tech industry isn't often just taking someone else's idea and doing it differently, slightly better, or with more marketing money. That man's an imposter. That man is the imposter. We are talking about the same company that borrowed stories from Snapchat and reels from TikTok. Still, now that Threads is out in the world, it feels like nobody cares. The question then becomes, why? To answer that question, we need to talk about the history of social media, the current state of social media, and what the public square looks like in today's world. Let's begin with Twitter. You know, the kid whose homework Threads is copying. A long time ago, at least for the internet, Twitter started as a response to an internet trend that, like AOL Instant Messenger and the Ice Bucket Challenge, has come and gone, the blog. Instead of writing a thousand words on how someone's vacation to Thailand changed their life forever, what if that person was forced to do it in 140 characters or less? This was the driving force behind Twitter, and it created a social media that attracted people who cared about words. You see, unlike other social media, which focuses on images and videos, your Instagram, Snapchats, TikToks, YouTubes, and Be Reels, Twitter's main draw is text. This led Twitter to be viewed as the premier place for academics, politicians, and journalists. You know, the people who work with words. This and its reputation as a place where news breaks caused Twitter to become seen as a global public square of sorts, a place where people from different cultures, backgrounds, and perspectives can come together to exchange beliefs, ideas, opinions, and to talk about the events of the day. With this in mind, Meta's attempt to undercut Twitter's influence with their very own digital public square makes sense. Adam Mosery, the head of Instagram, had this to say about threads. The goal isn't to replace Twitter. The goal is to create a public square for communities on Instagram that never really embrace Twitter and for communities on Twitter and other platforms that are interested in a less angry place for conversations, but not all of Twitter. But when all the dust settled, it seemed like this didn't really happen. The communities who didn't care about Twitter before also didn't care about threads. And even though it was tied in with Instagram, a popular social media for the younger generations, it didn't really capture their attention either. And now we've returned to our original question. Why did nobody care? The answer, they're all on TikTok anyway. This is especially true for the younger generations, and Threads has an uphill battle when it comes to that demographic. The cynical take might be to say that in text-based social media, there aren't enough flashing lights and moving pictures to hold their attention. Yet, when you really pause to think about it, TikTok accomplishes the goals of public square, you know, the idea of a space to exchange beliefs, ideas, and opinions more effectively and more efficiently than Twitter or Threads. By spending 15 minutes scrolling their For You page, a TikTok user will consume an astonishing amount of information about the world around them. They'll see news and current events and what their peers are saying. On top of this, they'll see videos about their interests, videos about things related to their interests, and videos about things that could become new interests. They'll encounter an abundance of ideas and concepts and philosophies. Now, they may not be the best or most helpful, but you can't say that Threads or Twitter's algorithms are any better at sifting through the garbage. This helps explain why Meta's attempt to undercut Twitter felt kind of doomed from the start. The cultural center of the internet has shifted away from Twitter and onto the younger and arguably more modern TikTok. It's where songs become popular, it's where internet trends begin, and it's where younger generations connect with the world. If you look at Twitter, it seems like it's devolved into a reaction space for the trends and memes on TikTok, and threads will very likely follow suit. 
In this light, Twitter's choice to rebrand to X makes sense. Elon Musk, X's owner, wants X to become an everything app with comprehensive communications and the ability to conduct your entire financial world. He specifically mentions WeChat, an app that has become the everything app in China. Yeah, everyone, everyone's like, they're like, you live on WeChat, you do payments, you do everything, and we don't have anything like WeChat outside of China. So I was like, my idea would be like, how about if we just copy WeChat? But why does any of this matter for us living in the real world? Does it really matter where songs and dumb internet memes originate from? It might seem strange to say, but it is important for Christians to pay attention to where the public square is in modern times. Whether it's threads, TikTok, or the places we physically exist in. There should be a place for different ideas and morals and values to collide and be discussed. In fact, these sorts of public debates were common during Jesus' time especially in Roman society. In fact, Jesus did a lot of ministry in public spaces. Although he did teach in synagogues, the equivalent of church, he also spent a lot of time out in public. He wasn't afraid to wade into messy spaces where people worked, partied, and lived. The Gospels are filled with stories of Jesus having very real encounters with very real people, even if they didn't agree with him or live in a way that people thought was acceptable. In the Gospel of Luke, we see this written about Jesus. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Put simply, Jesus cared enough about people to meet with them, right where they were at. But Jesus wasn't the only one. Paul also loved doing this. He made a habit of evangelizing in public squares to people who often, sometimes violently, disagreed with him. In the book of Acts, he stands up at the Areopagus and challenges the men of Athens about their religious beliefs and preaches the gospel of Jesus. It's not too crazy to say that Threads, X, and TikTok are the modern Areopagus of the day, and God may be asking us to step inside those spaces to proclaim the good news of Jesus. Thanks for watching this seven minute video. At Axis, we care about you having great conversations with the next generations on the subjects that matter. With that in mind, here are two questions to help kick off that conversation. Where do you think the public square is for your generation? And what do you think it looks like to have a Jesus-focused Christian influence in that place?